Welcome to another episode of the Bearded IT Dad. Today, we got a little bit of different video for you. We're actually interviewing an IT security specialist that lives in Uganda, and he's gonna share his story of what it took him to be able to enter the IT career field. All that and more is coming up after this. I'm Sozi Malik. I'm from Kampala, Uganda. I'm a passionate IT professional. Um, Why well, I'm saying a, a professional because I'm already out. I'm pursuing certifications and I'm also still a student. I'm in my second year at, at university. So I work as a paid volunteer with non-government organizations, companies, schools, universities, even communities, but particularly on cyber awareness programs. I'm also a remote cyber security instructor. I do instruct digital forensic, enterprise security, access control, and cryptography. And uh, I also work as a cyber security administrator, currently serving a virtual testing foundation that is California, USA. I'm also still a university student, still pursuing a bachelor's in information technology. I'm in my second year. So, uh, that's what I do for a living, and I'm open to opportunities of learning, uh, scholarships, collaborations worldwide. I love working with people. I'm curious about learning. Thank you. Diving right on in, what made you want to get into the IT field? I would say that uh, since my childhood, I've been curious, I've been passionate about uh, usage of computers, and I started using these computers at the age of five. I started uh, with a Pentium, Pentium 4, and I was using it to play games like chess, Need for Speed, you know, back in those days of Road Rush. So I later on um, began exploring the other usage of the computer that was typing, printing, and all the, that other. So I get to understand how a computer functions, so I get to know how to secure information, like how is this thing working? So I wanted to understand how it functions, how it works, and that's where my curiosity began. And since then, I decided to explore opportunities that are in line with, with IT or with computers. And after my high school, I wanted something that was practical. And I did join an Indian Institute in my country, and I got uh, taught and mentored on IT infrastructure and cybersecurity. So that was like handing me the keys to the kingdom and I had to set myself free. So nice. I started out uh, my career um, since then. So I've been on a learning journey and I would say it is interesting, challenging, but uh, of course the fruits are too good. Nice. Now, um, you, you mentioned, you know, already what, why you kind of got into the field. Now, for you, like, did you have to figure out what you enjoyed about IT or did it just come naturally to you? Well, uh, to my side, it just came naturally because uh, uh, we had this computer at home and I had it full time at my disposal. So I began exploring what it is used for, how it functions. I I got to dismantle it, put it up, and it was more of like a game, like a challenge. So it came naturally, and I don't think maybe I can do some other thing perfectly because I'm, I'm, I'm into this. I feel it flowing in my blood. Nice. Now, why did you choose uh, cybersecurity over all the other fields? <laughs> well, why I chose cybersecurity is that uh, I find it more of like a, a challenging field. I would say um, I've served also in some other roles. Uh, that is IT support. I've also been a, a network administrator. So on, on, but on contract basis, just short term basis. But I would say with these roles, you keep on doing uh, the same thing. That is my perception. I keep on doing the same thing, uh, get the network uh, cable out, put it in, do the same things, run. So I find it more of like a, a routine, but I wanted to have something out of the box, something that is challenging. And yeah, I found the security domain a bit interesting and I love, I love security. So uh, I, I just feel it is one of the domains that I had to pursue. So that's, that's how I took it up. And particularly I want uh, penetration testing and digital forensics. 
for for you when you're getting into the field, what was some of your biggest struggles you had? Well, uh, since I'm coming from a developing country, I would say that uh, the resources and opportunities for uh, for scholarships and certifications they are not they're not uh, really available. I would say they are limited. So making it it's it's a bit of a challenge. You can only make it if you really have that that grit. So. Uh, that's one of the challenges that I've had, and also the mentorship. You, we we do not have uh, like the way it is for Canada. You can see uh, they put up some sites, they put up some opportunities, some mentorship sessions. So it isn't that uh, easy to find in my country. So I'm only able to discover this because I make time for 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 my career. I make time with a computer, so I get to search lots of things. I get to explore all opportunities that are available on the internet. So that's how I got to learn about this domain and about the various opportunities. And I would say that I spend almost three quarters of my day with, with a computer trying to look out for opportunities. That's amazing. And, you know, I think so, in some ways that can be one of the best ways to learn. Um, you know, we kind of have this phrase over here, like community taught, whereas in like, you know, you've learned from the IT community on the internet and stuff. Um, you know, you're self-taught and sometimes being self-taught, you get a more hands-on real world experience than you might get in a classroom sometimes. Yeah. But again, uh, being self-taught, it's, it's a bit challenging if you do not have the grid uh, to still continue. The uh, absolutely you have to have that drive and motivation and keep your eye on that end goal what so you you're you're a cybersecurity administrator now what is your, like your your 10 year goal what is your your career goal what is the dream job for you <laughs> well uh, my my dream job i'd say it is uh, becoming a penetration tester and uh Currently, I've, since I've served in uh, quite um, multiple roles, so I would want uh, to pursue certifications. That is, uh, I started with certified in cybersecurity with with the uh, IC Square that ongoing promotion, which was uh, certifying one million cybersecurity professionals in the world. So I joined that and passed my exam. So I'm just uh, waiting for payment of the fund and a maintenance fund so that I get my certification. So I'm on to uh, Commercial Security Plus with ENA. So hopefully I'll be uh, getting um, uh, the exam. I'll be sitting for the exam. So I want to pursue more certifications. That my next one is CEH. And after CEH, I want to go for CISP, uh, EJPT, like that. So I want to get into a penetration testing role. What what made you want to go after the CEH? What over the other certifications? <laughs> CEH, I okay for for a beginner level. I saw my instructor at the institute I attended, and he was he was interesting uh, teaching us. But at the end of each module, he would show us uh, the different certifications that we are supposed to pursue if we are to make it in 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 the IT career. So I found I saw him training for CEH, and I find it uh, like an interesting journey. So I would I would want to pursue CEH first before uh, getting onto the EJPT because I also see it, it's kind of uh, with the EC Council. Who doesn't want to be certified with the EC Council? Exactly. No, the yeah, I, when I first heard, and for those of you who don't know, uh, the CEH is, stands for the Certified Ethical Hacker. Um, when I first heard of that certification, I thought it was uh, like, a joke, like the person who was telling me, I thought they were joking with me. And then I actually found out it was a real certification. I'm like, man, that sounds so cool, you know, to be cert a certified ethical hacker. And, um, I don't know, just something special about that title. So, um, you know, you mentioned you use the, the internet like as a big resource, but what other resources do you have available to you in your country to kind of learn these uh, skills that you need? Well, I would say that uh, for my country, uh, we're just starting up. These opportunities are just coming coming up. So I've been uh, able to work uh, with the different organizations and organize some boot camps uh, for for the budding for the budding youths. So uh, 
through those those collaborations, I've at least gotten to work with some people that are already experienced and are working in these in these developed countries. So they are coming back, and I'm making use of them as well as uh, the internet, mostly uh, LinkedIn. I've met with so many professionals. I've interacted with so many professionals, and I would say that it is one of uh, those communities that are willing to give in their efforts to train you. That is, if you know what you want. So. Thanks to the people that have met on LinkedIn and thanks to the opportunities that I've been able to explore. That, that's really cool. Now, if you were to give anyone one piece of advice that was looking to start out in this field, what would be that biggest piece of advice you would give to them? One of the advice is that uh, I would tell them never to let an opportunity go. Even if you see something that maybe someone is hiring, maybe uh, someone is requesting for something, for help, let's say, or let's say they're giving out something. So attempt, make efforts to make use of that chance, keep pushing harder. You never know what might come through. And that's how I also got this opportunity. I saw your form and I said, let me fill it. Yeah, maybe you never know. So I I saw that uh, I I got that chance and I'm really happy about it. Then the other thing I would say that always social network. So uh, when I'm not with my computer, I do attend IT events. I do attend webinars. I do go out and interact with the professionals. So this has really helped me a lot grow my career and explore the different opportunities. So I would say that everywhere I reach, at least someone knows me. And the other thing, practice your IT skills. That is, if you're going to be in this sector or in this domain. So I get to practice my skills. I get to wake up every morning at at 3 a.m. My day starts at 3 a.m. Wow. So I get to push... All, all through. And then the other thing is that find time for the things you love. Uh, personally, it is IT. So I'm always with my laptop. I'm always on my laptop. And that's how I try to connect. So if at all, maybe you're a soccer lover, at least go for those uh, games for refreshment. But I do relax with my computer. I do play games on my computer. That's how I relax. So the cybersecurity field is constantly evolving. What are some ways you try to keep up with the upcoming, like the, not, not the upcoming, but like the, the constant changes in the IT field? I've been able to join a dynamically changing field. And I would say that how I'm able to keep up with the trending technology or the trending changes in, in cybersecurity. One is that I do network. So I do meet out these people that are already working in this field. I do interact with them. So I'm able to pick up a few, uh, notices or a few uh, bits of information from them. Then I do also attend webinars about cybersecurity, about uh, the trainings. Uh, those are organized by the universities, both in my country and abroad. So through uh, those events, I'm able to follow up on what is happening and what is likely to come out. I also keep a track on the different as certification bodies, like the EC Council, like the ISACA, like the IC Squared. So I keep following them. I know uh, the different free trainings they're releasing, uh, what what threats are there. I also follow uh, the Darknet Diaries. I follow uh, human hacking. So I keep uh, uh, interactive on the internet so that I'm at least in the, in the scope of uh, the knowledge. And so if people want to connect with you and learn more about you or, you know, uh, talk to you, uh, where can people really find you? I'm available on the internet. <laughs> And I welcome people uh, to the learning field that is LinkedIn, my LinkedIn uh, uh, channel. So I welcome all of you. Kindly uh, search for Sozi Malik. You'll be, you'll be seeing me. So I will come, come connect with me and we we'll share opportunities because I'm open to work. I'm open to opportunities and I really love working with people. Awesome. I will, we'll make sure and put a link to your LinkedIn down in the description for you, below for people to find you. Any other advice you have for people? To, that are looking to make the switch into this career field? Uh, well, for people that uh, do want to make a switch, maybe they've been into uh, the different fields. I would say that uh, cyber security is interesting. Uh, do come when you're ready uh, to take the challenge. Come and we explore the different opportunities. And I'll be 